When it comes to beings with fearsome reputations, there are few SCPs that are as widely dreaded as the hard-to-destroy reptile, SCP-682. No sane mortal would ever choose to face such a creature, and its overwhelming ferocity and strength have even given the reincarnating warrior SCP-076-2 able pause on more than one occasion. But then again, the sane aren't exactly in high demand at the SCP Foundation or at equivalent organizations formed for the purpose of battling anomalous and supernatural entities. Organizations such as the Public Safety Devil Hunters from the popular manga and anime Chainsaw Man count numerous peculiar individuals among their ranks. And sometimes the best of the best are marked by a distinctive tendency for out-of-the-box thinking. That's putting it politely, at least. But this isn't the story of some aberrant loser freakazoid. No, definitely not. The heroine of this tale is none other than the mightiest and most charismatic future Nobel Prize winner ever to grace the rest of us shameful worms with her presence. The invincible and dearly beloved blood fiend, Power. Who just so happens to be the undisputed best character in Chainsaw Man and of all fiction as well. It appeared to be an unusually boring day at public safety, and for this, Kobeni was grateful. The young woman had come to expect the absolute worst from her job as a devil hunter, as her assignments usually entailed facing down hellish entities born from the very fears of the human race. While one would think that someone who worked so diligently in the field would have grown numb to it all, Kobeni still very much retained her anxieties, both on and off the job. At least all she had to do today was file paperwork from one of the public safety's like-minded partners in supernatural management, the SCP Foundation. It was a safe and harmless task, aside from the risk of paper cuts and the associated potential for the paper cut devil to show up. Even so, Kobeni would do her best to make this rare moment of peace last as long as possible. A voice cried from down the hallway. Oh no, not her, Kobeni thought. Why is she even at work today? She's a fighter for Division 4 and she's not good at anything else. Loud, exaggerated footsteps rang out through the hallway as the blood fiends stomped through the offices of public safety. Kobeni wanted to shrink until she vanished from sight or let herself sink into the floor. Her desire to not have to see power today was so great that she contemplated opening a window and climbing down the side of the building to the ground floor. Please don't come this way. Kobeni was still carrying a heavy stack of freshly filed paperwork, and she didn't want her tireless efforts at organization to go to waste. She looked frantically at the cabinets in the storage room she was in, hoping to find enough space for her to crawl into and make herself scarce. But it was too late. Power slammed open the door of the storage room and announced her presence. The shock was so great that Kobeni screamed and flung the stack of SCP Foundation papers all over the ground. She clutched her fast-beating heart unable to attend to the mess immediately. Kobeni hadn't had to experience a fright that sudden since the time that she was sent to hunt the jump scare devil. The poor girl could never have a surprise party thrown in her honor again. True to her name, Power immediately reprimanded Kobeni for dropping the papers, stating that her workmanship was sloppy and that Power herself could easily carry ten times the amount of paper. Kobeni tried to not let the chiding of her co-worker affect her mood. She bent down and scooped up the papers, but much to her chagrin, Power decided to help with this task as well. The blood fiend began grabbing the papers and stacking them as assertively as possible on the nearest surfaces, resulting in many crumpled edges and uneven piles. Kobeni attempted, albeit hesitantly, to correct Power's paper collection method, only to be met with more scorn. Kobeni nearly cried. This was just too much for her to handle especially on what was supposed to be a calm day. That was when Power picked up one of the files and began to read. It was a record of the infamous cross-test between SCP-682 and SCP-076-2. Since Public Safety had previously assisted the Foundation in recontaining SCP-076-2, there had been an agreement to send copies of all relevant documents involving Abel over to Japan in case of another incident. As Power struggled through the scientific language and specifics, she began to envision her own version of the events that played out on the page. She imagined herself as Abel, facing off in pitched combat against SCP-682, and giving the terrible lizard a run for its money in the process. In the mere seconds it took for Power to finish reading the document, she had not only concocted an entire epic battle in mind, 
but was not fully convinced that her fantasy was indistinguishable from one of her own lived experiences. In her head, Power had definitely fought against SCP-682, and she'd do it again in a heartbeat, just to teach that overgrown reptile another lesson. Power asked Kobeni if she had ever told her about the time that the Blood Fiend had totally defeated SCP-682. Kobeni, still clutching to her increasingly frail understanding of reality, responded with confusion. What was she talking about? Nobody in public safety had fought against an SCP other than 076-2. There was no possible way that Power was telling the truth. But the scariest part was, Power herself didn't even know that she was lying. The Blood Fiend began to relate the sordid details of her pulse-pounding fight with SCP-682 to Kobeni in great detail. Kobeni, for her part, was too emotionally drained at this point to try and stop her. It all started at the bowling alley, where Power was hanging out with her much less intelligent friends, Aki and Denji. The Blood Fiend had just finished winning her fifth perfectly scored game in a row, when some shady characters a few lanes over decided to cause some trouble. The leader of this little gang was none other than SCP-682. The way you bowl is disgusting, the troublemaking lizard said. This wicked remark would not be stood for. Not in the proud bowling establishment that Power had founded with her own money and achieved several years of successful business running herself. The bowling alley was a pillar of the community and she was the owner. There would be no further disrespect on her watch. Power put up her dukes and got ready to bring the pain down on SCP-682. Aki and Denji were too terrified to help her out as usual, but did their best to cheer their leader on from the sidelines. SCP-682 also dismissed its minions and crawled forward like the big, ugly lizard that it was. It obviously didn't know better, which is why it wasn't backing down in the face of the greatest devil hunter that the world had ever known. Either way, this would be a brawl for the ages. Rather than cause damage to her beloved place of business, Power suggested that she and her opponent took this fight outside. Despite its uncouth demeanor, the reptile had a healthy appreciation for the fine sport of bowling, and most especially, this particularly excellent run five-star bowling alley. It agreed to step outside in the interest of not bringing bowling into this intensely personal grudge match. But then again, wasn't the fight about bowling? No matter. Power and SCP-682 walked outside the bowling alley into a vast, trackless wasteland, the perfect place for both of them to go all out without hurting any civilians. Using her ability to control and reshape her own blood, Power constructed an enormous crimson mallet that she was able to wield gracefully in both her hands despite its incredible size. SCP-682 readied itself. It had faced many different kinds of humanoid weapon wielders before, including Abel, but it was too clever of an adversary to let its guard down. Especially because, in this case, the blood fiend it was fighting was a remarkable businesswoman and an Olympic gold medalist in… everything. The reptile certainly let its guard down. Power held the hammer above her head and jumped high into the air. If she wanted to, she could have circled the globe in a single leap, but out of respect for the fact that SCP-682 was a paying customer at her establishment, she decided to hold back for the first attack, at least. Nonetheless, she brought the hammer down on the hard-to-destroy reptile with supreme force. SCP-682 smashed into the ground with such a force that a crater opened up beneath its body. The reptile itself didn't seem especially damaged, but the effects on the surrounding environment were certainly dramatic and fitting for an ultimate showdown. SCP-682 shook off the blow and pounced on power with such ferocity that even she couldn't remain on her feet. She tumbled back into the dust and debris of the wasteland for several miles before catching herself and standing back up. Remarkably, there wasn't even a scratch on her. She pointed and laughed at SCP-682, mocking it for its weakness and stupidity. The reptile grinned wickedly and responded with a mocking laugh of its own. The creature had intentionally taken a hit from power in order to better understand her fighting moves. Who wouldn't want to steal those masterful techniques after all? They're just too good to resist making a cheap copy of, and from what Power could remember from her speed read of the file, that appeared to be SCP-682's whole thing. Soon, a barding of blood-red armor appeared around SCP-682's body. In the short time that it had been fighting Power, it had clearly learned how to manipulate its own blood and was now even stronger for it. 
<laughs> now I'm as strong as you. I can't lose. SCP-682 barked at power. She swung her mallet in a show of force. The two combatants, now both wielding the near-limitless powers of the Blood Fiend, charged at each other across the battlefield. This was not just a mere sparring match anymore. It was a fight for the fate of the entire world. Snapping back to reality, Power's retelling of the story had devolved into a series of random exclamations and sound effects. Kobeni was now finding the events incredibly hard to follow, but thankfully she had been able to use Power's highly distractible mannerisms to finish restacking the files from the Foundation. Not a minute too soon either, as both she and Power's boss, Makima, stepped into the storage room. Apparently, Makima was in the process of doing a headcount of all employees who had come into work today, as any normal and benevolent superior would. She had been looking for Kobeni and Power for some time now, and was surprised to find them here, of all places. Kobeni explained that she had been putting away the last of the SCP Foundation files, and would gladly accept whatever new post she was given. But Power wasn't done with her current SCP-682 fascination, and turned to Makima hoping to be encouraged to continue the story. Makima simply smiled and implied that if Power was so inclined to settle her score with a hard-to-destroy reptile, public safety could get in contact with the Foundation and have her on a flight to Site-19 by that evening. Power suddenly realized that she had come down with a terrible case of whatever crippling disease that would be a sufficient excuse for her to not do that. Makima nodded and encouraged her subordinates to return to work. Want an anomaly of your own? Check out scpswag.com for high-quality SCP merch. Now go check out Rick and Morty More Powerful Than SCP Foundation Mad Scientist Battle and SCP-096 vs. Siren Head for more crazy crossovers.